Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. What a joy to be with you here on this Easter morning. I'm Pastor Stephen Hilmer from St. Matthew's here, and it is my privilege to lead us in worship this morning. Uh, print it out. Uh, you can print out for yourselves as an online order of worship available through our website or was emailed to you. I encourage you to do so because there are a number of responses that we will speak back and forth to one another as we worship today. The hymns that we will be singing, if you're getting your hymnal out, hymn 152, uh, all eight verses, but it's scattered throughout the service. Uh, we will also be singing a hymn out of the supplement, but those words are printed in this folder for us. As we gather this Easter Sunday morning, we do so with our pre-service choir song, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. God's blessings on your worship. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Rejoice now, all you heavenly choirs of angels. 
Rejoice now, all creation. Sound forth trumpet of salvation and proclaim the triumph of our King. Rejoice, all the earth, in the radiance of the light now poured upon you, made brilliant by the brightness of the everlasting King. Know that the ancient darkness has been forever banished. Rejoice, O Church of Christ, clothed in the brightness of this light. Let all this house of God ring out with rejoicing, with the praises of all God's faithful people. This is the day when all who believe in Christ are delivered from bondage to sin and are restored to life in immortality. This is the day when Christ, the life, arose from the dead. The seal of the grave is broken, and the morning of the new creation breaks forth out of sight. How holy is this day when all wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. How holy is this day when innocence is restored to the fallen and joy is given to those downcast. How blessed is this day when man is reconciled to God in Christ. Let Christ, the true light and morning star, shine in our hearts. He who gives light to all creation. Job. To celebrate our Savior's victory, we are mindful that he gave up his life on the cross because of our sins. Therefore, with sincere hearts, let us confess our sins to God our Father, asking him for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news of Easter. God our Father has been merciful to us. Through Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice has been made. God announces to you the forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first scripture lesson we hear on this Easter Sunday morning from the Old Testament book of Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of that big fish for those three days, and then the Lord caused him to come out. What a picture of our Savior who was in the earth for three days, and then the Lord raised him from the dead. We hear in Jonah's prayer his confident hope that the Lord certainly would not abandon him. Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, and the deep surrounded me. The seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. And my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. The word of our God. Psalm 118. Uh, is our psalm for this morning. We invite you to join in the refrain as it is printed there. Our choir will sing the verses.
is the day the Lord has made, and we continue to rejoice and are glad in it, especially as we hear the Easter gospel recorded in Matthew chapter 28, the first 10 verses. This will serve as the basis for our meditation this morning. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. We join in the hymn, In Christ Alone.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a way to continue our worship in that joy of our Savior living. This morning, we're going to go back for just a few moments to that first Easter. It was early. Before dawn, early. Now, those women, they had just celebrated the Passover and, and observed the Sabbath, but I doubt, I doubt very much that their hearts were all that in it. Their beloved Jesus had just been mistreated and, and brutalized. He had suffered in the very worst way possible and treated as a common criminal as he was crucified. In a rush to get his body down off of the cross before the Sabbath began, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea had asked Pilate to take the body down and place it into the tomb before the Sabbath. John tells us that nearly they used nearly 75 pounds of spices in that process. But even still, that, that wasn't enough. That wasn't going to constitute a proper burial for their beloved Jesus. Those ladies, getting up so very early in the morning in their tremendous love and passion and zeal for the Lord, were going to finish what was started. Now just, just stop for a moment and, and think about that. What were they expecting to see and find on Easter Sunday morning. Really, they were going out expecting to, to find and to see the lifeless, decaying corpse of Jesus. They were expecting that somehow they were going to get the stone moved away and somehow they were going to get by the, the guards that were posted they were expecting to go into that tomb and, and unwrap the body and, and apply the, their ointments that they had purchased and then to rewrap it all and to walk away, at least in the solemn, somber satisfaction that they had honored their Jesus one more time by doing this, even as tears flowed from their face. But what they saw what they heard, what they experienced was, was far from anything they anticipated. And, and glory and praise be to God that it was. This morning, when you got up, was there just a, a smidge of hope, maybe anticipation, that, that you could come to church this morning and that you'd be together with all of your, your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and, and tons of, of visitors that you could worship here together? That you could sing out God's praises at the top of your lungs and, and who cares if it's just a little bit off key or not even close because it'll all blend in with everybody singing? Were you anticipating the way that partway through the surface, service that the, the smell of bacon from the basement begins to overtake the perfume of the lilies? Were you hoping, just hoping, that maybe, maybe this Sunday we could, we could get together? Oh, those memories of, of past Easter celebrations. But this year, this year is, is not the case. You're at home. And, and while you can still fry up all the bacon you want, and you can put it next to that six ninety nine lily you picked up at the pig, it just isn't the same. Or is it? This morning, as we hear again the Easter gospel, as, as we remember how the events of Easter unfolded, we see that God not only meets our expectations, but he exceeds them in every way possible. I mean, roasters full of breakfast sausages are wonderful. And packed pews are great. But they don't hold a candle to an empty tomb. They don't hold a candle to the seven words that the angels spoke to the women. He is not here. He has risen. 
Seven words that exceed our every expectation. Seven words that mean life eternal. Seven words that give our life meaning and purpose. He is not here. He has risen. May these words always meet our expectations and exceed them by far. When people go out to visit a gravesite, what do they normally expect to see? There's probably a headstone and, and names and dates engraved on them. They, they go out there to put flowers maybe on the tomb or just to stand in somber silence remembering the fond memories of their loved ones. A few weeks ago, I went to my grandparents' gravesite. My grandpa died when I was just four years old, and grandma, she died way back in 1953. Nearby were some other aunts and uncles and distant relatives, and yeah, I thought about their memories, those whom I knew. Going there always, to a degree, brings about tears and sadness, because that's, that's what death, death does. But what's even more devastating is to realize what it is that brings about death, and that is sin. The scriptures tell us so plainly, the soul who sins is the one who will die, that the, the wages of sin is death. There is no escape from that universal truth. That's something that, because each of our sins, something that we can expect. And either our names are going to be engraved on stone or etched into an urn, it, it doesn't really matter. Death is something because of our sin that's going to come to us. There's no escaping it. Just like there was no escaping death for Jesus, except for a completely different reason. When Jesus was in Pilate's court, when he was condemned to death, he was completely innocent, and Pilate knew it. Jesus was unlike anybody else that had ever been in his courtroom. No wrongdoing, nothing at fault. There was nothing to condemn him. He was truly innocent. Pilate knew that. It, and even as he tried to wash his hands, that didn't get rid of the guilt that he was feeling and, and dealing with. He thought for sure, though, that he could get out of it. If he gave the people the option of having a known murderer released to their streets or having Jesus. But that backfired too. That didn't meet his expectations. In fact, Pilate had no idea what to expect from the, from the uh, earthquake that rocked the region to the bloodthirsty crowd. From the darkness that set in from noon until three until the two strangers that asked for his body. Even the Pharisees who came to him and asked that a guard be posted. Yes, Pilate didn't know what to think anymore. Death had come to Jesus. But not because Pilate made a mistake. Death came to Jesus because you and I and our many mistakes because of our many sins. Yes, the spotless, sinless Lamb of God died that death on the cross to pay for all your sins and mine. And friends, he did it. He did it fully. He did it completely. He paid that price for our sins in full. That Easter Sunday morning, when yet another unexpected earthquake hit the region, when those women came out there, they didn't find what they expected. There was a bright, beaming angel sitting on the stone that had already been rolled away. The guards, well, they were lying there like dead men. And then the angel spoke to them directly and said these words, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. In our modern language, we might say, didn't see that one coming. What they saw, what they experienced, what was incredible, right? They were hoping, maybe, possibly, to see the 
lifeless corpse of Jesus, and instead, they saw an empty tomb. They saw the place where he was. He is not here. He has risen. Seven words that totally changed their lives. No doubt their their heads were spinning. What does this mean? Where is he? Could he possibly be alive, or did someone steal his body? Before all those things could be answered, the angel sent the women off on a very important mission. But Jesus, Jesus had yet one more surprise for them. We read, So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. He was not dead. He was truly alive. They could hear him and see him and hug him. They were with their beloved Lord and Savior. A Savior who had truly exceeded every of their expectations. Now some people have said that Perhaps we, nowadays, have a distinct advantage over the women back in that day. And that distinct advantage is this. It's history. Right? We have the ability to to look back. And and throughout our lives, we've studied the scriptures. We we know the whole event of Easter. We know how things were going to unfold, how it all fits together. From young on, we've learned this. Jesus was going to suffer and die and then rise again. And regardless of whether we were in church here hearing that message or you're sitting on your couch at home, you know how the events of Easter were going to play out. Which, well, I'm not really sure is that an advantage or perhaps is that a disadvantage. Sure, it's nice to know the rest of the story, but there's a way that knowing that can sometimes lead to a bit of complacency. What a danger it is when the message of Easter becomes old hat. What a danger it is when that message of Christ's resurrection, his death and his resurrection, loses its impact on our lives and all we begin to see Easter Sunday as is just another date on the calendar, just another day closer to when we can get our lives back to normal And everything can return to the way it was. Talk about an Easter disaster. I really don't think Jesus' followers were, were at that much of a disadvantage. You see, Jesus had told them plainly throughout his ministry. In fact, he told them before and after his transfiguration. He said this, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. And then John recorded this from Jesus, who said, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it again. Did they not just realize what Jesus was telling them? Or perhaps once the crucifixion happened, did they just forget everything and it, it went out of their minds? In truth, Jesus has always given mankind, whether back then or now, every advantage to hear God's word and believe it. The problem is is that you and I and, and, and sinners have taken advantage of that and we've taken it for granted. Satan and the world have certainly done their best this Easter to try to not let the gospel be heard not allowing people to gather, and, and yet the main culprit oftentimes is, is ourselves. We, we take the message of Easter for granted, and not just gathering together on Easter Sunday, but, but every opportunity to, to hear God's word, every opportunity to, to study God's word. What foolishness it really is on our part to think that, oh, we can always just gather for worship, or maybe next week, next week is the when I'll start going to a Bible study. Such foolish arrogance on our part. Dear friends, the truth is the word of God is what brings eternal life. This is a message that we must never take for granted. 
nor do we ever want to assume that we can just learn of it tomorrow. Today is the day to hear the gospel. Today is the day to take the message to heart, to refocus our expectations and our goals and our priorities. Yes, we have these neat internet connections, and we can share the word really quickly, but we all know how internet connections and technology fails. There's only one thing that does not fail, and that's the word of God that will remain forever. Therefore, we, we treasure it, and we read it, and we study it, and we hang our every hope on it, because it's the word of God, and God cannot lie. Just a few days before Jesus died and rose, he was at the home of Martha, and he shared these words with Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus there promised to end the reign of death and of sin and of Satan. And he did that through his innocent death on the cross and his victorious rising from the dead. This means life. This means life, whoever believes in him. And that includes you and me. This is his promise to you and me. This, dear friends, is our greatest hope and expectation. One from which we will never be let down. Because our Savior always keeps his word. For those ladies at the tomb, the, the sight and, and the message and the words from Jesus truly dispelled all their morbid thoughts and it dried all of their tears, they'd set out with one purpose that Easter Sunday morning. But the angel and, and Jesus totally repurposed their passion and their zeal. They said, Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. They had a critical mission. And, and that mission, that critical nature of it, is seen in one word in those verses. It's the word brothers. Jesus was making a huge statement about what the resurrection meant for his disciples. They who, to a man, ha had promised to never deny him and always be by his side, they who, who were cowering behind locked doors instead of out helping the women to move the stone. They who could have been called wimps, weaklings, liars, sinners. But yet Jesus calls them brothers. On that cross, he wanted them to know that he had paid for every single one of their sins. They were forgiven. There was no longer any reason for them to. To be afraid. And that's the urgent message that Jesus has for you and me this morning. Whether it's that we have taken for granted the opportunities to gather together in worship, or taken for granted the opportunities to study God's Word, or, or both, Jesus wants us to know that our sins are completely forgiven, that He views you and me as His family, as His brothers and sisters for whom he bled and died and rose again. And what does that amazing message do for us? Well, it totally repurposes and focuses our zeal and our passion. Because when Jesus spoke those words, he wasn't just speaking them to the women. He was saying them to us too. When he says, do not be afraid, go and tell my brothers. Yes, he was speaking those words to us. You and I daily meet people who are still cowering in fear. Fear of having to meet God Almighty when they die. You and I are constantly running into people who know less and less what Easter is all about. And, and that number is only going to grow the more de-churched that this world becomes. That's what makes this mission that we're on so very critical. So very important. Everyone needs to know those seven words. He is not here. He has risen. Because it means, it means there is hope. It means there is life eternal in store for all who cast their hope on Jesus. 
As Jesus said to Martha, so he says to each and every one of us, because I live, you too shall live. This is our confident hope, dear friends. This is the promise of our living Lord and Savior. And this is why we will each day exclaim from the top of our lungs, from the bottom of our hearts, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Amen. As we join together our voices, we will join in the Apostles' Creed, confessing the Christian faith of one another. We speak these words, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join in the response of prayer for Easter Sunday. Heavenly Father, God of grace, you have brought us into a new and living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Christ is risen. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. He is risen indeed. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Alleluia. We marvel at the love you showed by your willingness to sacrifice your son to pay for our sins. We bow in adoration at your mighty power, which raised him from the dead. We praise you for sending the true light and light into the world. Lord Jesus, God of grace, you have filled our hearts with resurrection joy by your victory over sin, death, and the grave. You have conquered the darkness and given us comfort and hope. With the church of every age, we offer you unending praise, for you have crushed Satan's head and have removed our guilt. You are, you are risen. risen. Dear Savior, we who are weary and burdened come to you for rest, knowing that because of your perfect redemption, there is now no condemnation for us. You are risen indeed. Take away our doubts and fears, and daily renew us in the joy of our salvation. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, God of grace, you have called us by the gospel and brought us to saving faith in our risen Lord. We glorify you for opening our eyes to see the light of life. Keep us with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. He is risen. As we journey through life, make us yearn for the day when you will give us eternal life to us and to all believers in Christ. He is risen indeed. And gracious Lord, we come before your throne of grace this morning on behalf of Fritz Redfield, the brother of Harry, who is hospitalized and struggling with cancer. We entrust him into your care, dear Lord, and pray that you would bless all the medical means employed on his behalf. Grant patience to him and peace to his heart, knowing that the victory is his through faith in Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you would surround the family of David Haley, whose father passed away this week. Comfort and guide the family in these days. Surround them with your grace and mercy. Be their good shepherd and lead them to the springs of your life-giving water. And calm and dry their tears in this hour of sadness. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private prayers in a moment of silent prayer. Work through us as we proclaim the saving message of the crucified and risen Jesus near and far, so that many others may hear your call, obtain the salvation that is in Christ, and join us before the throne of our God and of the Lamb. Alleluia, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia, amen. 
Hear us, O Father, for the sake of him who is the firstborn of the dead and is now alive forevermore, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. It is in his name that we bring this and every prayer to you, just as he taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the glorious Father, who by his power raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, give you the spirit of wisdom to know the hope to which he has called you. And may he preserve you in body, soul, and spirit until our own resurrection on the day of Christ Jesus. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We join in the closing verses of hymn 152. joy it is to be together, even virtually, and to sing God's praises.
Thank you to those who assisted also in our worship this morning in helping to beautify our service and to glorify God. Please take note of the number of announcements that are on page 7 of the printout. Uh, we will be continuing our online Zoom Bible study. If you want to join that, uh, please send Pastor Bigelow an email. And a reminder again, you can join us here at church on Sundays. We still are meeting in small groups of less than 10 uh, to share the Lord's Supper and share a, a word of encouragement, uh, meeting either here in the sanctuary or in one of the classrooms or in the basement. So you may, may join us on Easter morning here this morning between 8 and 10 or on Sundays uh, coming up between 8 and 11.30. God's blessings be with you as you continue to celebrate the joy of Easter and we will send you on your way as we hear a, from our brass choir, Christ the Lord is risen today. God be with you and have a blessed Easter.